Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we are diving into the first video of the nervous system. So nervous system is pretty exciting, but this, so this video is just kind of like an overview of the entire system, the different functional breakdowns, and then the you know overall purpose of our nervous system. Of course, this sensory input, your brain and motor output, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about all the different divisions that do make it up. All right, so like I said, we're gonna be going over the basic functions and the different divisions. So first up here, the two main divisions of the nervous system. We have the central nervous system, you'll see this abbreviated CNS, and then we have the peripheral nervous system, which is PNS. Um, so central nervous system, central, it's brain, so here, let's color code this. So central nervous system is red, brain, and spinal cord. Spinal cord goes all the way down. And then peripheral nervous system in green is everything that comes out. So all the nerves, so going down the arm, like your sciatic nerve is part of the peripheral nervous system. All the thoracic nerves right here. You even have some cranial nerves up here, like your optic nerve, all olfactory, um, you have this vagus nerve that comes down from the head. So you have these cranial nerves and um, your spinal nerves are the remaining nerves for the nervous system. So two main groups, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. There are some differences. Central nervous system um, has cerebral spinal fluid in it or CSF. Uh, remember it's in its own body cavity and there's some unique cells that are found in there as well. Peripheral nervous system, um, it's just within the interstitial fluid of the body. And there's, there's still neurons in both. Neurons are the functional unit of the nervous system. And we'll talk about the structure of a neuron in the next uh, videos. So those are the two main divisions, CNS and PNS. Now, within these divisions, we have some differences in what the matter looks like. So here we have what's called white matter. That's a very big, thick pink line. We have white matter versus gray matter. So what this means is the neurons themselves. So the neurons are, they have a cell body on it. So this is the nucleus of a neuron right here. They have all these little branches that come off called dendrites. That's where they receive their signals. And they have this long axon that then goes down to wherever it needs to go and then goes to these little terminals. That's just the brief structure of a neuron cell. And there are some other types, but these are the main ones we're going to talk about here. Um, so the differences in white matter and gray matter deal with a structure that follows these long lines. These are called axons. So they get wrapped with like an electrical insulation called myelin. And the more of that you add, the whiter it looks. So here you can see, if I highlight this in this brain here, you can see that's all whiter than this over here. I keep clicking that, the pink one and not the red one. Uh, then this over here, which is the gray matter, which is a little, darker in color. So gray matter are short little non-myelinated neurons. They lack the green here, which is the myelination. Myelin, think of it as just cell membrane that wraps around it as a protein lipid substance. Whereas white matter, this is going to be communicating more longer distances. So we find white matter and gray matter in the brain. Uh, you see the outer cortex here is gray matter and then white matter underneath. We see it in the structure of the spinal cord and it deals with myelination and usually it relates to the length of the neurons themselves too. So that's one difference. And then another uh, functional difference is here between uh, PNS and CNS, so peripheral and central nervous system, um, are terms. So we just talked about the structure right here. This is called a cell body. So a cell body is a nucleus. And we've talked about some different forms like an atomic nucleus. Here is a nucleus in the cell. Well, in the brain, we have another nucleus, a cluster of these cell bodies here, like circled on this image over here, you see these darker uh, gray matter areas. That is a nucleus as well. So multiple ones are called the nuclei, such as the ones I circled there are known as the basal nuclei. So it's a cluster of cell bodies in the central nervous system. 
A cluster of cell bodies can also be found outside the central nervous system, so in the peripheral nervous system, and those are known as ganglions. So there's something called the dorsal root ganglion and autonomic ganglions um, that are found in the peripheral nervous system. Next term difference is a nerve versus tract. We've all heard of our sciatic nerve before. So that's in our peripheral nervous system. Less common are these tracts. The tracts are found in the central nervous system. What it is is a cluster of axons traveling together. So cluster of axons is a group. So your sciatic nerve is thousands upon thousands of axons traveling up through it. Um, you have the same sort of tracts that occur in the central nervous system. So here, um, is showing for vision, for visual processing, we have the optic nerve. So optic nerve is in the peripheral nervous system. Then when it enters the optic chiasma here where it crosses over and goes to the thalamus right here, now it's within the central nervous system. And you see now it's called the optic tract. And then it travels back eventually to the occipital lobes here where vision is processed. So you kind of see where here it's peripheral nervous system, and then in here, it would be central nervous system. Those are those cranial nerves we talked about. So the optic nerve is cranial nerve two. So just wanted to highlight the difference when you see the word nerve and when you see the word track. Um, it's a bundle of axons traveling together. It just terminology varies on where it is. So now we're gonna get into the functional division. So I tried to put together a graphic here that breaks this all down. First here, we have the central nervous system. Remember, this is the brain and spinal cord. So we see there's an arrow going down and an arrow coming back. Everything in our body will end up communicating back to your brain and the central nervous system to let, let it know what's going on. Central nervous system also, of course, communicates out. And the only way to get out is via the peripheral nervous system here or the PNS. Now let's say we're doing a motor output first. Let's keep going down this arrow here. So going down, this is called a motor or the efferent division. I like to remember the E and efferent for exit. So the E and exit, E and efferent. Um, compared to over here, it says afferent, which is for arrive. Um, a for arrive. We'll talk about what that division is coming up here. But this peripheral nervous system, when you're doing a motor output, I go like that. I'm drawing on the screen. Those are all motor outputs. That's the efferent division. Now I am controlling that output. So if I'm controlling that output, that's called the somatic nervous system. So your somatic nervous system is what you have voluntary control over. Now you have, right now you might be, you know, sitting on the couch watching this, sitting in your bed. You are in a restful state, hopefully. That's called rest and digest. Your heart rate is slower. Your respiratory rate is slower. Your pupils are dilated. That's your autonomic nervous system at work. So this is the ANS. ANS is occurring automatically. If after you watch this video, you decide to go for a run, your heart rate increases, your respiratory rate increases, your vasomotor tone changes, you get more blood going to your skeletal muscles. You don't have to think about doing that. Your body automatically does it. So. That's broken into two divisions. There's the parasympathetic division, and then there's the sympathetic division. They're named based on their locations and where these um, spinal nerves exit or the cranial nerves. Um, so don't worry about that too much, but parasympathetic stands for rest and digest. So that's when you're at rest, you're more blood going to your digestive system, pupils are dilated, your heart rate is slower, your respiratory rate is slower. Sympathetic is your fight or flight response. So that's where you're up and moving, your heart rate's going and you're in a, your body thinks it's more of a survival response, it's getting more blood to your heart, skeletal muscle and so forth. Um, so that's all broken into the autonomic. So you can see how that is all motor output, but then you have all the sensory input coming back. Right now you might be sitting down. Um, so you have all your stretch receptors in your skin. So all these are all dealing with the receptors. So this is somatic sensory nerves here. Somatic sensory, what that means is monitoring your stretch. I'm touching this pen tip right here. I can sense the tip of that pen touching my finger. That would be a somatic sensation when it's so like touch, vision, hearing, smell, 
all those tastes, all those senses, um, you can detect, and that's somatic sensory compared to visceral sensory. Visceral sensory is referring to like stretch of your bladder, any discomfort in your internal organs or things like that. That's a little different, but similar as well. But visceral, remember, is mean the term means your inner organs. Um, this can also you can have your enteric nervous system or the ENS. Enteric is your digestive system. So there's this massive nervous system within your digestive system where the digestive system can communicate with itself and inform the brain of what's also going on. So again, all of this comes into the sensory division. So you see these arrows coming in. So this is all the sensory input or arriving division. All this information is coming in through your peripheral nervous system and then up to your brain. Um, so there could be some processing that occurs in your spinal cord or all the way up to the brain. So we'll talk about reflexes in a later video where when you touch something hot, you automatically reflex away. You actually do that before your brain is informed that you touch something hot. Um, and that's called a reflex action. But last little thing here, uh, just to summarize the basic functions of the nervous system and the importance. It all comes down to step one, having a sensation. Some sort of stimulus activates a receptor and allows for a sensory input, whether it's you listening to this video right now, watching this video, that's all a sensation activating neurons, which are sending signals to the brain where you are then integrating. Integration is where it's figuring out a response. Are you going to need to do a motor output? Are you, if you're learning, um, are you forming new synapses? What, what's going on? Are you um, eliciting other associations with the material and so forth? And then you need to, you sometimes, not always, but you have a response to that event. So a motor output, think about touching a hot pan. You respond by removing your hand from that hot pan. So again, basic functions, you have a sensation, you integrate that information, and then you respond to it accordingly based on pretty much survival and what you need to do. All right, so quick uh, little video here to go over the little intro to the nervous system. Uh, like always, if you have any questions, please let me know. But if not, hope you all have a great day and see you next time. Bye-bye.